They are and, uh, kindly know to only accept people who have their real names on this meeting. So you cannot join using uh, your phone name if you want to be a participant for this meeting. So thank you. I hope you all understand. So you can write in the chat section your name and also where you're joining us from and make sure that you share uh, the link for the Zoom meeting so that friends and family can join and benefit from this exciting and educative Pan-African history. Yes, um, we're not going to waste much of our time. We're going to start to hear for the country speakers uh, to represent uh, their countries. And I'm um, only being, being notified that uh, one of the speakers is facing uh, some network challenges, but um, we're going to have someone to present uh, that speech which he, uh, he was about to present. Yes, and I'm going to share the one who is going to present uh, the, the report for that person. He's here in Zimbabwe. I'm sure he's facing some network uh, challenges due to some load shedding in some areas. Yes. So, um, so to start off uh, the meeting, I'm going to ask my brother, Butai K. Bu to come forward and introduce uh, himself. And um, mind you, we are also live on Facebook. So those who are on Facebook can write in the chat room away you are connecting us from. I thank you for, for joining us through the Facebook Live. We appreciate you. So brother, um, brother Buta, Butai Kebu, I hope I pronounced the name right. You can uh, unmute yourself. Yes, sir, can you hear me? I'm getting clear. No, I, I can't. I can't hear you clearly. I can't hear you clearly. Can you? Can you hear me? I'm getting a lot of clear. It, it depends on the network connectivity. All right, you can go ahead and. Uh, Are you getting me now? Yes, sir, we are getting you now. You can introduce yourself and go ahead and present the report on the Apple All right. All right. Hello? Yes, you can go ahead. You're getting me now? Yes. All right. Thank you very much for giving me this uh, opportunity at this time to participate in this uh, show. Well, at this time, I would like to say many thanks and appreciation to the organizer for the I Love Black People organization. Well, right now, as we speak, before we should go ahead, let me start to give a little report about COVID-19 in Liberia for now. <clears throat> right now, in Liberia, the COVID-19 report we have here, we have a contaminated to be 7,495. And also the death had to be 294, and we have the recover to be zero at this time for now. Well, I would like to say thank you very much, and I would like for this organization to be established in every country within Africa so that we will see how well we will protect Black people from racism and their xenophobia. Thank you, and remain as good day from Liberia. Thank you so much uh, for presenting on behalf of Liberia, Brother Bute. We really, we really appreciate you, and I'm looking forward as well uh, for to for you to invite uh, all of your friends, family, and everyone which you know who is serious about protecting Black people. Our application to all the corners of Liberia. We really appreciate you for having you as our our country spokesperson for this week. Thank you so much, brother. Yes, um, so on next, we're going to have, um, yeah, I'm still, I, I'm checking at the name I wish uh, our speaker joined using. Yes, uh, some of them are facing challenges. Uh, so we're going to have uh, Anna, Anna to present a report. Yes, Anna, you can unmute yourself. Can you hear me? 
Yes, Anna, can you hear me? You can unmute yourself. Yes, Anna, I've asked you to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, I think Anna uh, is facing challenges. Yes, I think Anna is facing some challenges. Uh, maybe yeah, you can give me a chance uh, to, to report uh, on behalf of our brother, Pride Muodzi, whilst uh, Anna is fixing. Uh, I think uh, uh, she needs to fix a uh, mic and also so that she can unmute. So I'm going to, uh, to present a report on behalf of our brother, uh, whose name is um, Pride, Pride Muodzi. He's from Zimbabwe. So I'm going to present on behalf of my fellow a brother Mozi here in Zimbabwe. Yes, uh, the report reads a weekly report for the Pan African History Group um, protecting Black people lives from racism and xenophobia, um, greed for money and resources, even lack of love amongst our leaders towards the local people that kills our history, the side of the past future. And present, and present in our economies, we embezzle with nepotism, fraud, systematic corruption. We lack leadership qualities. We believe leaders are inherently born. We don't believe leaders are nurtured. Some are born leaders through, but leaders with both qualities are great leaders. We elect power hungry leaders, those with a hungry background. What you expect, I love black people, is a global movement seeks to help protect black people from uh, xenophobia, a few of foreigners or strangers, and also uh, racism, which is discriminatory or abuse behavior towards members of another race. Black people have been plagued by many social ills and affected by abrupt changes in society, hence the use of the Alaf Black People app to recommend and like Black-owned business and Black-friendly business to protect Black people from xenophobia and racism. The platform focuses on eight essential categories that is our health, food, accommodation, transportation, education, childcare, legal, beauty. The goal is to make sure that no matter where a black person go, they will be treated with dignity and respect. That's our Love Black People Safe Places application is used and it's used to share uh, those are business recommendations through our friends and family. So let's uh, keep on recommending our businesses by navigating through those um, essential categories which are, uh, which are which are important for black people and also um i, I used my social media handles to spread motivational and unifying quotes of uh, our fellow black friends and relatives the summary of country group information the weather is partly cloud we are experiencing some wispy clouds some of them are bearing drizzles the country is calm and the political ground is calm despite the unstable economic conditions. And also health COVID-19 updates in my country. COVID-19 in Zimbabwe is no longer that severe, most probably due to following all the measures to combat and counter it. Little can you hear right now about any death cases of victims and the number of the sick is lower right now. Thanks to the government and to the um, I, IGOs and NGOs for providing with antidotes and other resources to counter this life-taking virus. Challenges in Africa, the problems of Africa are caused by us as people, we lack unit, we kill great minds, we want to maintain aristocratic systems, conservatist, wherever we see a great mind, we subject him through hardship instead of giving him power to excel and to build our nations. Reasons are for brain, um, for brain drain, we are very corrupt, dependent syndrome, so no need to blabber about change when we elect thieves, trainers, and leaders. Most of our leaders in Africa, um, they, they, they lack uh, knowledge of navigation. Um, the ship will sink if the captain has no knowledge of navigation. We need radical leaders, not conservatists. We are very reluctant to change. It's not about politics, but our nation building too much centralization in Africa kills our economies. All in all, black people, we must unite to conquer our problems. 
We need to emancipate ourselves. We also need to embrace technology in order to compete with the global world. So let's embrace this technology which I love the people is offering to us and uh, let's pledge uh, our lives and they hope to protect each other using technology with the Alaf Break for Safe Places application. It's easy to use, let's help each other. It doesn't take much of your time when you share a safe place. Make sure that you share as many safe places as you can so that you can protect our fellow brothers and sisters. So this report was compiled by our brother Pride Mozi. He's uh, located here in the other eastern part of the country and uh, uh, it currently is in Kadoma, another small dormitory town for Bulawayo. So we really appreciate our brother for combining this report. Yes, I, uh, I want to see if um, one of our um, speakers is on and also is ready to present. I can see most of our speakers are reaching out that, that um, they can't connect uh, due to network issues. I'm not so sure how uh, what's going on. I can I can see this mother reached out as well that uh, he's not she's not um able to connect. Yeah, so Anna Anna is joining again. Let's see if Anna can uh, be able to to speak to us. Yes, um Anna, you can unmute yourself. Yes, Anna, can you hear me? Yes. Can yes, you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, you can go ahead uh, and present a uh, report. Our this is our ambassador, Anna, is from Kenya. So she's going to present on behalf of people of Kenya. So you can go ahead and present the report, our ambassador. Okay, greetings first. I'm Anna reporting here from Kenya. Yes, the Kenya Weekly report. Kenya is now Kenya is now facing an economic crisis and cost of living is very, very high in Kenya. The amount of food produced is not even enough to feed the whole nation. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can, can hear you. You can go ahead and present. Yes, we can hear you clearly. Okay, the amount of food now is not even enough to... Yeah. Produce to feed the whole nation. We have to depend for food. Hello? Yeah, sorry. I, I, as I can hear you, there's some money in yeah. the office. Sorry about that. Okay, we have to depend for food from outside yet. We have fertile lands which can produce enough food and even a surplus for us. We have a high number of unemployed people who could use this chance to invest into agriculture. Agriculture has a high economic returns. 60% of the Kenya economy returns is coming from agriculture. We have a high number of unemployed people yet we have a sector which has been abandoned and can fill up with the unemployment gap. Farming, where we can also obtain, like farming where we can also obtain leather skills. Leather skills is now on market in Kenya and international. This leather skin, leather is obtained from animal skin. Very cheap, just like cow. God, this is a very good, very, very good part to invest in. But still, we have youths and Kenyans who are in, and not unemployed. We have also another very, very big sector, a very important one. Cultural, the cultural has been abandoned. We hardly had people to perform to keep the culture alive, especially in tourist hotels and many other parts of Kenya. These people are hardly to find now. We are actually, even the country is actually looking for those kind of people. We are losing our traditional. There's no one to keep the traditional alive. Thanks for all. We also need our agriculture, our regular Tuesday newsletter. Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear you. Yes, you can clearly hear you. You can go ahead and uh, finish up. Okay. Our regular, Tuesday, our regular Tuesday newsletter, which highlights on education, health, legal, finance, transport, beauty, food, and accommodation, and other black on black friendly content are enjoyed. Members are encouraged to submit their contribution on Thursday for review and published. 
in the newsletter. Members were encouraged to follow, like, retweet, comment on the various social media platform of the group. Our co-founder, Sinclair Skinner, is live, is live Twitter and also Facebook Live now. Our Honorable Ambassador and members were encouraged to embark on our group's activity to help effect the mission and vision of I love. It's very hot. In Sorry. Of I love black people activity, protection against racism and xenophobia. We join hands with the brother and sister all over the world facing any forms of this. Just a minute. I'm Yes, sir. You can wind up now, our sister Anna. The members who went against the group mission objects and goals were penalized and informed to stick on the group mission objective and goals only if they want to enjoy their membership. Ambassador and members in the group, in the country group, made time to help all new, all new members with challenges with their weekly task and we encourage everyone to seek the clarification and assistance when needful. Members were once again encouraged to stick to the Allow Black People mission and contribute mm. only or to the fight against racism and xenophobia attack. In our country, members who are not able to, to attend Zoom conference last week called session, session on Saturdays were encouraged to do so. They recommend other by sharing and further recommend others by sharing the link to this Saturday meeting. COVID-19 reports, accumulative confirmed cases. Just, just a minute. Yes, um, we can still hear you. Are you done uh, presenting the, the COVID updates? Yes, uh, all right. So, uh, thank you so much, um, Sister Anna. I can see that uh, you you done presenting the the report. We really appreciate you. I hope in uh, you be sharing our love big positive places application to all the um to all the friends and families in your area so that they can share the places with us. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the effort and the time which you took to compile a report on behalf of people of Kenya. We really do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. All right. Yes, um, that was our sister Anna uh, from Kenya presenting on behalf of people of Kenya. Um, she was uh, one of our country spokesperson for this week. We really do appreciate our hardworking sister. Um, and also she's uh, been very uh, participative in our WhatsApp groups, also helping other members on how um, I love like positive places application um, works. So thank you so much, our sister Anna. I can see one of our um, speakers also, Stancy, um, was uh, facing some uh, challenges in joining and uh, she couldn't join us. I think we need to fix it uh, uh, in the future so that uh, our speakers can able to assist at the meeting. She's facing some technical challenges uh, she was going to present on behalf of um, Zambia, but unfortunately, she she couldn't um, to join. She couldn't join at the meeting. Yes. Um. So without wasting time, we're going uh, to have our lead developer Alex Wafula presenting on the developments of our application, which is a love play war application. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. You can uh, go ahead and present to us. Uh, all right, great. Uh, right, so my name is uh, Alex Wafula. I'm the lead developer here at uh, I Love Black People. So I'm mostly responsible for uh, making sure our platforms online are working, our website, uh, our API, and our mobile app. So like today, uh, I just wanted to join to uh, talk about the updates uh, we're having the mobile app. So we've had uh, the app on uh, the Android and iOS app stores for, I think, almost three months uh, at this point. And uh, for this very early stage, we really uh, been collecting feedback from the community, trying to figure out um, 
what's working on the app and what's not, things that we need to change. I think one of the, like some of the feedbacks that uh, really stood out there was like initially uh, people are not able to tell uh, exactly what the app was for because um, essentially they love like people's safe places up at this stage is meant to empower you, our community, to uh, recommend safe places for Black people. So these are regular places that you go to, like things that are basic to human beings. So we have eight uh, key categories uh, that are basic for humans. So like where you, you can go eat, where you can go uh, like buy clothes, uh, in case you're sick, where you can go to, to get treated, um, if you have legal issues, where you can get lawyers. So like the very basic things that human beings need. So like we really created the app to empower our community to recommend these places for, for Black people because we do understand that not every place that we, we, we do go as Black people, not every place treats us with uh, dignity and respect. So we really want to only deal with those places that treat us well. And uh, so it, with this phase of the app, that's really what we're looking for. So you'll have an opportunity to actually recommend your favorite places, so places that you've gone to as a Black person and you, you had uh, a great treatment, you're respected. So that um, this way, uh, when you get to the next phase of the app that is actually curating and displaying safe places, we are actually going to use the recommendations that um, uh, that you provided to us as, uh, as a community in order to ensure that um, all Black people out there are safe. So especially even when you're traveling, you're going to a new place, you've never been there. So we hope this app will help people who uh, need these recommendations. Um, so if you haven't downloaded the app yet, I think already can post a link on the chat section uh, for the uh, where you can download the app. So we do have it available on both uh, uh, iPhone and uh, Android. Um, so you can go ahead and try it out. Then, uh, like I said, at this very stage, we are really looking for you to recommend those businesses. So you will not get to the app and find safe places. Instead, what the app does when you get to the app, it kind of highlights the businesses that are close by you. So we do not know whether these businesses are safe or not for Black people. So what we are hoping is like when you see a business highlighted that's close by you and maybe you're in that business or you have visited it before and based on your experience, you feel like this place is uh, is a safe place for black people you can just click the like button to recommend that business as a safe uh, as a safe place for black people if uh, for some reason you went to the place they treated you bad it's not a business you'll recommend anyone to go to specifically black people you can just skip so like what we're really trying to do with the app is to not deal with bad places so like we do not want to know that this place is uh, racist or xenophobic we only want to deal with the places that are good for black people so we do have a like and skip button. So if a place is a um, fair place to be black friendly, you can just click the like button. If not, you can click skip. And so like I mentioned for now, you do not see businesses that have been recommended on the app because we expect you to recommend. Then on our second phase uh, of developing this app, we're actually now going to display those businesses uh, so that uh, your friends and family can see them. Uh, in case you've ever traveled to a, to a new place and you're able to identify uh, safe places. Anyone else who comes after you can actually use those recommendations and uh, it will be easy for them to move around in a safe environment. And um, uh, with the new updates that we have for the app, actually we've um, included um, a way in the backend to like sort of identify people who are recommending businesses. So that way with time, we'll actually be able to curate all your recommendations and, and uh, be like, uh, hey, so for example, hey, Awad, these are the businesses you've been able to recommend. And it will be sort of a, a recognition system just recognizing the people in our community uh, who've given uh, their time and uh, space to like recommend these businesses. So that's one uh, exciting feature that uh, we're at an advanced stage of building, like actually being able to display um, or, or uh, uh, basically recognize uh, people who've recommended businesses for, for the efforts that they're giving towards uh, making sure Black people are safe. Then, uh, like I mentioned, we are definitely welcoming questions and feedback because uh, being at the very early stage of developing this app, we need uh, that feedback to make improvements. So if anyone has questions or uh, something that doesn't seem right on the app or they don't understand certain steps on the app, it will be really great if you can reach out 
So like not hesitate to feel like, okay, you should probably understand this. No, we, 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 we are really uh, looking, looking towards you to give us that feedback to improve the app. So if you do not understand anything on the app, that would be like a positive feedback for us. We'll, we'll be able to improve the app in a way that is clear and not confusing to you, right? So it would be great if you can reach out back to us um, either through our, in, our email, that's info at ilabblackpool.com, or you can post it here on the group. Uh, if you're in any of our WhatsApp groups, you can also reach out to us there. Uh, I mean, I think I'm in all the WhatsApp groups. You can also DM me directly as well. Uh, I'll respond. Um, yeah, other than that, I don't know if we have any questions, Award. Yes, um, um, we do here for Brother Domingos. Um, he was asking, is it possible to include a chat room in the app? Okay, uh, I think that's uh, interesting. Like, um, uh, what are your thoughts about the chat group, Domingos? Like, uh, what use case did you see for them? I think you can just type it out on the chat section. Let me just uh, unmute him. He's one of uh, the moderators. Okay. So, Brother Domingos, uh, you can unmute yourself. Yes, sir, Brother Antonio, can you unmute yourself? I think yes, there's something wrong with their mic because they say they're, they're not muted, but uh, no audio is coming through. All right, so I, I, I think I can write through the chat room exactly um, the idea for the to include the chat room in the app. Okay, yeah, and uh, Domingo, you can, you can also reach out directly to me. If you send an email to info at lovebackpool.com, I'm definitely going to get that. And uh, we can put this as like one of the items to consider for the, uh, in terms of development on that moving forward. But like I mentioned at this very early stage, looking at the resources we have, uh, in terms of uh, developers and also like uh, just managing to develop the app, we're really focusing all that on making sure it's super easy for people to make recommendations. So like once we have enough recommendations, the next stage will be to like display those recommendations on the app so that people can actually now engage with, uh, with those businesses. Uh, but yeah, definitely I would love to hear more of your thoughts about uh, like uh, the idea you have with the chat to see whether that makes sense at this point or, or like at a later point. But yeah, definitely reach out to me over email. All right. I can see there are no more questions uh, both from, um, uh, from Zoom and also on Facebook. We don't have any questions coming through. OK. All right, and, thank uh, you. How are we looking at with time? Is Nanako already on the call? No, Nanako is not already on the call. I'd ask uh, Yvonne, uh, maybe uh, she can share uh, the demographics so that uh, everyone uh, can see and also explain a bit about, about it. All right, cool. All right, mm -hmm. yeah. All yes. right, thank God. All right, thank you so much. So for those who still have questions or who still want to know more about the I Love Play for Safe Places application, don't hesitate to reach um, uh, through us here on um, Zoom direct using this chat room and also Facebook uh, comment section as well as uh, WhatsApp. You can ri just write in the group or you can ri write to any of the admins or the moderators. They can um, channel these questions to our lead developers. And also, if you have any ideas on how to improve the application, don't hesitate us again, uh, as well. We, you are the ones who are helping us and um, we do appreciate your feedback kindly share with us so that you can improve it and also so that it will be of a great uh, deal and also of a greater uh, big ideal in terms of helping black people from racism and xenophobia. We appreciate each and every one of you who are in here who are using the application and also who is sharing the application and making sure that people sign up so that they can be able to share safe places for black people globally. I uh, thank you. At uh, this time, I'm going to give it to you for one over to you, Yvonne. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to share my screen.
Yes, I hope uh, you can see my screen right now. Yeah, yes, sir, we can see a screen. Maybe also you need to, to explain uh, to all the members and ambassadors what uh, this demographics is all about and what it includes, something like that, so that they know what are they about to see. Yes, uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dushime Yvonne and um, the database developer of I Love Black People. Yes, uh, these uh, demographics, it's a monthly demographics for I Love Black People, where uh, like it shows uh, currently how many members we have, financial, uh, financial members, and also uh, the businesses, active members, like uh, in, I'm going to go through the demographics and uh, explain more about it. So currently we have uh, 110,068 total members in, in uh, 135 countries. So these members are, are scattered in uh, 135 countries. And uh, the financial members are like the members that uh, pay us that we can uh, continue do this work. So there are 204. Uh, financial members and uh, the active members are the members we have in our WhatsApp groups. We have different WhatsApp groups. They are country groups, ambassadors, the classes, uh, even the wait list. So we have um, 13,487 uh, active members, like members in our WhatsApp groups. And uh, for uh, our app, we had 2,432 uh, people that downloaded the app using Android and 551 downloads from uh, iOS. And then for the business recommendations, all the safe places that we, we collected from our members and ambassadors all over the world, it's uh, 54,672 uh, safe places. And uh, these businesses are scattered in uh, one, 163 uh, countries. And uh, in two, 2,984 cities or town. So with uh, this uh, graph, we can see that uh, most of uh, the safe places we have, their accommodations. And the least we have, they are legal. So, um, Moving forward, we would like uh, our members and ambassadors to help us with these businesses with you uh, that we are recommended, but there are a few like legal, finance, transportation, education, healthcare, beauty, and food. So um, also this is uh, the number of ambassadors we have uh, there are 1,336 from different countries. We can see that uh, most of them, they are from Zimbabwe. And uh, if you are in uh, these countries, apart from Zimbabwe, I mean, Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, uh, Zambia, Sierra Leone, Uganda, Tanzania, South Africa, Liberia, Rwanda, United States, Cameroon, Malawi, Yes, up to uh, Congo, you can help us to invite your friends and family to join us. Um, it, we usually share the link in our WhatsApp groups that you can uh, use it because our WhatsApp is more, it's easier to be used. You can use that link and share it with your friends and family that they can join us. Okay, and uh, this is a, uh, the map that shows uh, the businesses, all the safe places that were shared. This is for Africa, for North America, for South America. You can see that we don't have a lot of businesses there. Asia and Europe. So uh, in few words, that's our June uh, monthly demographics. 
So if you have any question about the demographic, you can uh, maybe send it to the chat section. I'm still on the call, then I'll be able to uh, answer it. Yes, thank you, Award. All right, I think you, Yvonne, uh, that was uh, our sister Yvonne Tushime from Rwanda presenting on the uh, demographics, uh, which shows uh, the number of ambassadors, members, which we do have in, the, in our community, and also um, how we are doing with the Love Black People Safe Places app and the business, which we recommended uh, so far. So thank you so much, sister Yvonne. Uh, without wasting much of the time, we're going to welcome uh, Sister Nana Akua Senzele to present on the healthcare lecture. Yes, uh, Nana Akua, can you hear me? Oh, okay. Good, good day, everyone. Hello, Award. Hey, Yvonne. Hey, Jerome, Hello. Samuel, Fred, Domingos, Prince. Y'all love it when I, I y'all know I love it when you turn the cameras on. I appreciate you. I love seeing y'all's beautiful black faces. So thank you for joining us again this week. Tashom, all right, very good. I appreciate you. I don't know if there's someone on the next page. I'm on my iPad, so I can't work this very well. And you'll have to look at my pretty black face because I can't show you from my device where I am. I'm traveling right now. So I don't have any um, handouts to display or share. Uh, so bear with me. You'll just have to look at me. So. Today, I want to talk, um, okay, you don't have your copy of the Global Green book, right? Um, then you should get that and you should tell all your family and friends to do the same. But in one of the pages here in the book, the holistic uh, health chapter, um, there are some good healthy eating uh, tips that I put in here. Um, so this is called food for healing. So these are just some good daily tips. It's not following a specific diet, um, whether it, even though we outlined that in the book as well. So we highlight the raw food diet, the juicing diet, uh, the macrobiotic diet, the alkaline diet. So if you so choose to do um, an actual diet, that's great you're guided into how to do that here in the book as well. But these are just tips you can follow. Joshua, okay, I see all the new people that's cut their cameras on, I appreciate you. Um, so these are just some tips you can just implement on a regular basis without following a very strict or particular diet, okay? So, and my screen looks a little different. Uh, as always, in the ward, if you can go ahead and put my email in case I don't get to specific questions, feel free to email me. Uh, this information is in the packets that we have that we put in the groups, but if you're not in the group, feel free to email me. I'll send that to you as well. Okay, so let's get started. So changing our healthy, um, changing our eating habits can prove to be difficult. And I'm just reading from the book, right? Sudden changes will surely lead to failure. Small steps are usually the best approach. Begin by evaluating your current needs, your health challenges, and your lifestyle. Consider incorporating small changes. And I listed some of these below. It doesn't have to be a big task. Some people wait until, oh, I'm gonna wait until I have extra money to do a raw food diet. Or I'm gonna wait until I'm not working to do a cleansing juice cleanse. Or I'm gonna wait until whatever circumstance. You really don't have to do that. You can implement these really small practical things. So the first one is drink water instead of sodas and juices. Real simple, right? Alkaline or distilled water. And of course we would include here herbal teas. But the point is to get more natural fluids, liquids that are not uh, full of sugars, artificial sweeteners, um, carbonation, things of that nature. So while fruit juice may be good for some people, for others who uh, are diabetic or those of us who are watching our weight, there are many reasons that you wouldn't include even natural fruit juices. Um, water is water is water. I'm not a fan of adding your flavor packets because these will usually have some kind of artificial sweetener in it possibly some artificial colors and flavors in it. 
if you need to add something to your water, this should be something like a lemon or lime slice, maybe some cucumber slices, uh, some pieces of ginger, maybe some mint uh, leaves, these types of things. But we really want pure natural water. And again, um, herbal teas are always included as a, a natural water um, choice if it is just the herb itself. So not if you've made your herbal tea like the British and you've added your cream and milk and that sort of thing, not what we're talking about here, or not if you've made it sort of like a down south person raised here in the US where you've added a lot of sugar to it, right? We are talking about herbal teas that will uh, have just the herbs and the water. So the benefits of the herbs is what we're getting here along with the water. Another tip is reduce or limit meat and dairy consumption. Simply replace your animal protein with plant-based proteins. Now, I'm not an advocate of soy these days because it definitely here in the States, there are a lot of GMO, you know, genetically modified soybeans. But there are other uh, plant-based proteins. Actually, and I think it is this week's packet. So if you have that packet, there's a whole handout on plant-based protein options. So it may be flax seeds, it may be actual vegetables, um, broccoli, kale. There are a number of other choices other than actual flesh and other than soybeans, un unfortunately. Uh, now, if you get something that's soy-based and it specifies that it's organic and non-GMO, that's an option. But because soy is a natural estro estrogen promoter, you still, depending on what stage you are in your life, still may not overdo it with that. You may not want to overdo it with that. So if you're a woman that's still in your childbearing years and you eat too much estrogen rich foods, that still is not a good choice for you, even if it's um, a natural pure uh, soy base. Um, the next one is reduce or eliminate sugary or high glycemic foods. Avoid hidden sugars in foods and follow the glycemic index. So if you joined us last week, you know, we discussed um, the glycemic index. And that's a chart that gives us the actual number of how starchy or how high a food raises our blood sugar, right? So the glycemic index is a chart you can easily access, um, Google it, it'll give you, and of course in our packet, we already have that for you, um, but it will give you all of the foods that are starch foods or starchy foods, foods that contain carbohydrates, and it'll give you low, medium, and high starch foods. So these are foods that you want to have in mind, you know, what foods I can freely eat, which are low or medium or moderate glycemic foods. Those are the foods that are assigned a number of 70 or less. These are foods that you can eat kind of freely. The ones that are above 70, your potatoes, um, your high uh, starchy fruit that are really sweet, like your mangoes and your melons and things like that. Those are the foods you really want to avoid if you're having an issue with your blood sugar, um, or at best do them in what we call strict moderation. Some people say there's no such thing as moderation, but some of these foods we like, we're going to partake of those, but just know these are high glycemic foods and we want to really limit how much we consume of those things. And then of course, hidden sugars and foods like sauces. Um, and I talked last week about our bouillon cubes, right? So even in our famous jollof rice, whatever part of, of the continent you're on and, and you claim to make the best, a lot of us put these bouillon cubes in it, right? So in addition to them being full of salt, they'll have sugars in the seasoning packet or the little cube um, for the seasoning. We want to be careful of those types of things. In our seasonings, in our sauces like ketchup, um, salad dressings, other things that we add to season or spice our foods, a lot of these things contain what we call hidden sugars, okay? And we also know that any food that has that OSE at the end, right, like dextrose or maltodextrose or sucrose or those types of things. We know that's a sugar derivative, right? And so these are things we want to read labels and try to avoid if we're really trying to cut out or eliminate sugars from our diet. The next tip is sweeten our drinks, desserts, and other foods with natural sweeteners. And here we're talking about things like agave nectar, monk fruit, xylitol, stevia, these are all natural sugars. They do not elevate your 
uh, glucose levels. They do not add any kind of artificial sweeteners that will cause other issues uh, or health crises. Uh, these other sweeteners like honey and maple syrup even, these are high glycemic foods. So even though they're natural, they still will cause health issues uh, that we really want to avoid. So your natural sweeteners are going to be your best options. Stevia, agave nectar, monk fruit, xylitol. Another good option for you to implement is to replace ordinary table salt with Celtic or Himalayan sea salt. Right. And of course, other like sea based uh, seasonings like kelp and dulse, these have natural sources of iodine and sodium. So they'll add that flavoring that you may be looking for in your food without the actual salt. And then, of course, herbs and spices. And again, not these multi seasonings that you'll buy prepackaged that will be full of salts and sugars. Actual oregano, actual parsley, actual marjoram or what have you, your actual spices, not these blends that have other things added to it. Another thing you can implement is to practice good food combining. So in order to digest our food properly or to assist our bodies in digesting food properly, you have to combine certain groups of foods uh, well. So for example, proteins and vegetables are a good food combination starches and vegetables are a good food combination, right? But most of us have been raised to eat a starch with a protein. This does not allow the body to digest it well, okay? So again, we have a handout in our lesson packet that gives a really good description and, and demonstration of that. But proper food combining is essential. This helps us avoid um, indigestion, whether it's acid reflux or upset stomach or heartburn or any of these digestion issues. And then of of course, going further down the gastrointestinal tract, proper food combining will help to eliminate diarrhea and constipation when it's time for those things to be eliminated, okay? Next one is include liquid meals, such as freshly pressed uh, vegetable and fruit juices, or even a smoothie, okay? So if you give your body a rest from having to uh, digest solid foods, this helps prolong life it helps uh, preserve the digestive system and gives it a break. It's not constantly having to break down um, the solid foods that we're eating, especially if we're not combining them properly, okay? Eat fresh, unprocessed foods, avoid foods with hydrogenated oils, monosodium glutamate, and high fructose corn syrup, as well as artificial sweeteners. So I kind of combined a few concepts here, but if you do nothing else, read your labels. If you see monosodium glutamate, because you won't see MSG. So a lot of times uh, you'll go to, you'll go to say a, a Chinese restaurant and they may just have a sign that says no MSG sometimes. But in ordinary circumstances, when you're in the grocery store, when you're shopping for your food, the label will not say MSG. So monosodium glutamate is what you're looking for, spelled out. And there'll be so many um, other words that maybe you're not familiar with, uh, and they could be harmful as well, but some that we know and I want you to easily identify are things like the monosodium glutamate. That is a flavor enhancer. It's an artificial uh, flavor enhancer. Um, so it is, created specifically to trick your mind into, oh wow, this is the best food I've ever eaten. This is so good, it's so full of flavor. Um, however, it's linked to different types of brain and nervous system disorders, okay? So this is not something we want to have included in our foods. Um, and back decades ago, when it first came uh, out that this was a harmful substance, Chinese restaurants got themed for it just because, well, and if you go on an Asian market, you can find bags of monosodium glutamate. They sell it like bags of sugar and flour. So I'm not saying they didn't deserve that. However, you have many other brands made all over the world that's full of monosodium glutamate. So not just uh, Chinese foods. Um, but the hydrogenated oils, we always wanna use cold pressed or expeller pressed oils. When we have hydrogenated oils, these are oils that have been heated up and hydrogen added so that it will help prolong the life of whatever food it's made with. So this is where those foods in the center of your store, not refrigerated, 
produce type foods. These are the products that will last forever and probably have sat in a warehouse or been shipped somewhere for months or years even. It's because they are highly preserved uh, and made to last. But if you can imagine how that will then react in your body, um, you know that these are not foods that are gonna be life-giving for us. These are not gonna be good ideas to have something that's sat around for years, right? Um, and these oils that would normally be healthy would normally provide us the essential fatty acids that we need, the essential oils and fats that we need, but they, they won't now because they've been heated and chemicals added to them. So we wanna read the labels for anything that will say hydrogenated canola oil or partially hydrogenated oil. It'll say different versions of that. We wanna avoid those types of foods. Uh, and then the high fructose corn syrup, this is an artificial sugar. This is a, a highly concentrated syrup that also is put in foods, um, of course, to give that sweet effect, but also to prolong the shelf life. Uh, and we know that this is linked to different cancers and other health issues. So we do not want the artificial sweeteners, same thing. We really don't want something to say sugar-free. Best believe it is an artificial sweetener that's added to it. No one's going to drink or eat a food that has no sugar or no sweetener in it. So that no sugar added, uh, I'm gonna say it's a lie because it's not the no sugar itself that you're looking for. You're looking for, is it sweet? So of course they've added what we call an artificial sweetener. So your um, aspartame, um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting the other one, um, but these, artificial sweeteners, bad news, bad news. And I didn't put in this um, bullet here, artificial colors, um, but our, our packet for this week does include a handout on that as well. But also we're going to avoid foods that have artificial colors as well, because we know, and in some countries, these things have been banned because they're known to be linked to certain types of cancers. So your red number 40 or your yellow lake number five and six or your blue, 20 or whatever it is. These are artificial colors. We also want to avoid those. The next tip is to eat fresh, unprocessed foods, avoiding foods with, oh, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself. Um, include uh, nutrient dense foods, right? So these are our superfoods, okay? So if you, again, if you're a regular, you know we've talked about these highly nutritive foods called superfoods. These are foods that have so many vitamins and minerals in them that they're considered just the nutrients that our bodies need. We want to fill our diets up with these types of foods, making sure that when we're making choices of what we're eating, we're doing really well and we're giving our bodies all the nutrition that it needs um, and not having to do a lot of supplementation with uh, bottled vitamins um, and minerals and things of that nature because you're eating your nutrients through your, your foods. Include herbs and foods that contain vitamins and minerals into the diet and avoid dependency on synthetic vitamin and mineral supplements. I guess you can tell I wrote this, right? Because that's my train of thought. So I just spoke about that. Um, eat your last two meals or your last meal two hours prior to bedtime. This is important. Many, many people will eat and then lay down right? This will interfere with proper digestion, okay? You want to give your body time to digest, and it should be able to do that as you're up, still kind of moving around. Not, of course, jumping about, doing some really strenuous physical exercise, but still in an upright position um, so that there's no interference with how that uh, digestive process works. A lot of times, like I may even try, if I'm tired, I've eaten, I really want to lay down, I will instantly get some type of heartburn or indigestion. I just cannot lay down after I eat. It's really best to still move about, still have a few things to do as you're winding down your day, um, and then lay down. Do not eat and go right to bed. Replace black and white teas with herbal teas, and you can include whichever ones seem most beneficial to you. Um, some that you can easily add that have a lot of uh, health benefit that I would call super herbs, right? Just like we have the super foods are things like alfalfa, peppermint, party arco, catnip, oak straw, red raspberry, nettle, and horsetail. Okay, so these are really good because if you follow the list that I have in the packet uh, where we give the food sources 
um, for the vitamins and minerals. These are the herbs that are high in many different vitamins and minerals. So all of these are high in C, uh, B vitamins, um, calcium, iron, things like that. So these herbs that I listed here, I specifically chose these because you can't go wrong with these herbs. So as opposed to your, uh, your standard black and white tea that you might drink after dinner, and that's a, a good habit. Um, I still would say wait maybe 30 minutes after you've eaten before you have your after dinner tea, but make it one of these herbal teas. The next one is to eat organic foods whenever possible. When organic is not possible, at least avoid what we call the dirty dozen. The dirty dozen is produce that's grown with heavy amounts of pesticides and herbicides. Okay, so the ones that we consider to re be really pesticide laden or, or full of these pesticides, like these, um, the, the things that they put to kill the bugs and stuff like that. But of course that interferes with the soil, right? So a lot of us are vitamin D deficient because there's so much being sprayed on our crops and getting into our soil that their soil is now deficient of a lot of minerals and things that we need and we would normally get through our foods, right? This is why organic is important, right? But these foods are always um, sprayed really heavily with different pesticides. Um, so these are the ones you should really try to buy organic only. Celery, strawberries, spinach, cherries, grapes, apples, peaches, pears, nectarines, tomatoes, bell peppers, and then your greens, kale, mustard, collard greens. These are things that you really want to try to get organic. And of course, let me give you my little spiel on growing our own foods, right? Because of course, and that's provided you have a good plot of land that you're starting with in the first place. But if you're growing your own, you know what you're putting in the soil. You know what you're spraying or not spraying on your crops. So, and, and these things are really easy uh, to grow. Strawberries have become a really big uh, thing. Get an organic seed though, or start with an organic strawberry and you preserve the seeds yourself, right? Don't go to, if you're here in the States, don't go to Home Depot or someplace where, uh, I mean, unless you're getting their organic crops, but if you're just going and buying a plant that's already been grown and started, who knows how, that's defeating the purpose, right? But start with good natural organic seeds and grow a lot of these things yourself. Tomatoes, really, really easy to grow. I love tomatoes. I grow tomatoes every year. Bell peppers, really easy to grow, right? So some of these Greens are a little bit of a challenge. I have little rabbits in my yard, so they are eating up my collard greens. Um, they used to eat my lettuce, and I gave them the lettuce. This year, I didn't grow lettuce. I guess that was my mistake, because now they're eating my collard greens. But other than the animals and the normal, you know, animal life or, or uh, insect life that will just naturally be in a garden, you're going to know how healthy your plants are. So I'm always an advocate for growing our own food. Whatever we can control, that's what we should do. So when we get that opportunity, we want to make sure we take advantage of that. And if you don't have a yard or outside uh, ground to grow in, you can always grow in pots. Okay, I'm no good at that. I got to put it in the ground, right? But if you can grow houseplants, you can grow vegetables and herbs. Several herbs are very easy to grow. Um, so I really, really encourage you to do that. And then the last one I have listed in this section is to cook in iron, stainless steel, glass, or porcelain cookware. You really want to avoid aluminum pans and utensils. We know that aluminum uh, is a toxic metal. Uh, we know that a lot of our seniors and elders uh, have Alzheimer's and some of these conditions that affect our memory and brain function because of heavy metal toxicity, specifically aluminum. Um, so even though I'm a thrifty shopper, I don't have a problem at all with like a dollar store. Here in the States, we have these stores called the dollar stores or in any variation of it, Dollar Tree, Dollar Buys, whatever, right? And they sell these really cheap um, aluminum-based uh, utensils, pans, uh, pots, things of that nature. Really try to invest in a good, you know, cast iron or porcelain or clay or some other type of material to cook and store your food in to avoid the leaching of those heavy metals into, um, into your foods. 
Because just as important as choosing a good quality food, how you cook it and prepare it and then what you serve it in is just as important. All right, so, oh goodness. Now, as I was speaking, the comments were popping up. Now, this is just me maneuvering my screen to find your comments. Okay, I see it. So let me see if I have a couple of minutes to respond to your comments. Okay, somebody sent me a direct message. Um, yeah, so a lot of us are heavy around the middle, very common thing. Um, and, and this person is asking if it's related to low blood pressure. Usually this is, you know, a, a blood sugar issue. This is us eating too many starches um, or uh, too many carbohydrates specifically. It could, could be fruits, it could be grains, it could be rice, bread, that sort of thing. Um, so I would say to really follow that low glycemic index um, chart and really be conscious of what foods you're choosing doing the food combining and doing the proteins with vegetables and the vegetables with your starches. I think that that will really help. Sea moss is good, absolutely. Very mineral rich. Um, you're gonna get so many of your natural, whether it's calcium, whether it's iodine, whether it's um, manganese, you, you name it. So really high mineral food. So this is gonna help with energy. This is gonna help with um, immunity, immunity and all of that. Yes, apartment dwellers can definitely grow that. That's what I'm saying. If you don't have a yard to grow in, do you some pot gardening? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay, good. Thank you, Award, for answering that question. I see someone asked about the book. So yes, you see there, and you know you can access the book on Amazon. Award, do you want to put the? Is there a link per se? I see you just listed the name of it. So maybe put where they can actually get it. And so, great, okay, great. I appreciate all the greetings here. Thank you all for joining. And I got a couple of minutes. Um, so let me just, let me close the chat. So know that you can always send me an email if you have some question related to what I have, um, uh, mentioned here, uh, or if it's related to health or one of the topics we've maybe previously spoken about. Um, I don't give uh, specific advice in terms of a condition, but if it's related to something that we have discussed as part of one of the packets, part of your reading, something that you know, you've know you already heard me mention here, I'm open to getting that information. And I mentioned earlier some of the different types of diets. So if you have maybe implemented some of these things I made mention of, and you wanna go a little further, feel free to also refer to some of the different types of diets. I mentioned them briefly earlier on. But for example, if you want to utilize one of the tips of doing liquid meals, you don't have to actually do a juice diet where you only juice. You may pick one day that you will juice um, and then resume your normal eating uh, routine the next day. Or you may implement a one juice a day uh, protocol where you may juice in the morning and then you'll eat a good healthy lunch and dinner. Or I think a better option is to juice for your last because most of us to avoid that other issue of laying down uh, directly after eating a meal might be a better option to eat whatever normal meal for breakfast and lunch and then consider a juice meal for nighttime, especially if your schedule doesn't allow you to sit up for the two hours, right? So, and, and usually we're less active in the evening or whatever our bedtime is. I know we sometimes have alternate schedules, but that might be the best time to implement juicing or a liquid fast or some kind of liquid meal. Even if it's not juicing with a juicer, you may choose to do a smoothie where you blend up some fruits and things like that so that you'll take it easy on your digestive system uh, so that you can sleep better and your body be able to retain those nutrients better. Okay. So thank you all for joining us again. I'll see you back here next week. And as always, I bid you good health and peace. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nana Kaur, for the wonderful lecture. We enjoy the rest of your weekend also. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Okay, bye.
Yes. Hello. Yes. yes. Okay. So I'm next. I'm not going to be on camera this week, but you're not going to need me to be on camera because I'm going to go right to the video you should have watched. Uh, so this is Dr. Wright, everyone. Um, welcome. Uh, and I'm actually going to go right to uh, what you should have watched. So I shared uh, Cuba and African Odyssey, and I'll be sharing two readings that go along with that. Um, hello, hello. Uh, I don't hear what you said, looking for. I'm going to repost the, the film that you should have watched. It's called Cuba and African Odyssey, but we're going to we're going to talk about in brief uh, the beginning of the film, which deals with a very um, important topic, which was Patrice Lumumba and uh, the struggle of the Congo, which uh, very often is referred to as the most important assassination of the 20th century. So I'm going to just play a few clips from that so that uh, people can understand the setting. Um, and then I will be sharing a document that you're going to be reading for this week, the readings for this week, uh, one by Emil Carl Cabral. And I think the other one is by Nkrumah, okay? And so that will be um, the readings for the week, and that's our discussion right now. So let me just, um, I'm going to share my screen. We're only going to watch a few of the, the first uh, few minutes of this together, I'm going to share. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully you have already watched it. I'm just highlighting a particular portion. And those of you who have not watched it already, you can see that it was posted in WhatsApp last week. But then uh, I will repost it just for the purpose of, um, you know, reiterating okay so one moment I'm gonna... let's see hold on one second Okay. All righty. So I should be able to share my screen. Okay. July 1991 in Havana. It is Nelson Mandela's first trip outside Africa since his release from 27 years of prison. But why would the legend of struggle against oppression decide that the first person he wants to thank for helping to end apartheid is Fidel Castro, the very man who is regarded in the West as an oppressor of his own people? Fidel Castro and 500,000 Cubans took part in the African wars which ultimately ended colonialism. This little known story began in 1960, only a year after Cuban revolutionaries triumphed. The struggle had captured people's imagination and the young feisty leaders Fidel Castro and Che Guevara emerged from three years of guerrilla war as heroes. The wave of independence in Africa was spreading like wildfire. That year alone, 17 African countries gained independence and 30 others started their revolutionary armed struggle. African revolutionaries were looking to the Cubans as a model for their own independence. Cuba was living proof that David could beat Goliath. Gran 
hasta conquistar la verdadera independencia. Quería referirme específicamente al doloroso caso del Congo, único en la historia del mundo moderno que muestra cómo se puede burlar con la más absoluta impunidad, con el cinismo más insolente, el derecho de los pueblos. Che Guevara was revolted, and his speech gave a clear signal that Cuba intended to act. The case of Patrice Lumumba in the Congo was symbolic of how African independence would be crushed by Cold War strategic interests. Okay, so um, I'm going to, I'm going to come back to this point. This is why I'm highlighting it for this session. So um, we have a lot of uh, political stuff going on in the world with regard to uh, the Eastern and Western or Eastern uh, European nations and Western Euro European nations being involved. In terms of our conversation around Pan-Africanism, um, the things that I want you to understand about this is one, Patrice Lumumba, yes, he was a very young clerk who would rise to be the prime minister of the Congo. Uh, but his interest was in on unifying the Congo and having the Congolese people be the primary beneficiaries of what the Congo had to offer. Okay, meaning uh, that whatever the Congo had, it would be to the benefit of the Congolese people, uh, not Belgium. Prior to this, the, uh, the Congo had been one in the hands of King Leopold, uh, a sole owner of the Congo, which was acknowledged by the US first. And then it would go on to be in the hands of uh, other kings, uh, after that and and belgium as a whole so this was problematic um when the congo is liberated it's a result of the congolese people fighting for it but publicly this uh liberation struggle would be circumvented uh and dubbed a gracious sort of gesture on the part of the king of Belgium, right? The, the you know, junior uh, King Leopold. This was, this is incorrect. Uh, there were, it wasn't a full-fledged armed struggle there, but there was uh, civil unrest. And of course, um, uh, basically a challenge to the established authority there. And the Congo has had a long history of violence under a uh, by Belgian against the Congolese people, right? Because of rubber forced labor, King Leopold is responsible for the death of at least 10 million Congolese people during the initial years of his um, imperialist rule in that country. And so uh, it was a long arduous struggle in the Congo. They seek to uh, discredit Lumumba in trying to imply that this was a gracious transfer of power by uh, the king. And Lumumba clears that up on their Independence Day. It's called the December 12th speech. And it's a very famous speech that he gives where he salutes the Congolese people uh, and he addresses them as such, as opposed to um, you know playing along. This speech to the Congolese people on their day of independence would get him assassinated, essentially. And what is at the core of the issue? The core of the issue is control of the resources um, of this African nation. Very important thing to know about the world and the strategic position of the Congo in the world. Whoever controls the Congo and the nine surrounding countries uh, controls the bulk of the world's resources, okay? And that being the case, uh, will have leverage in terms of military capabilities, uh, the, you know, technology, 
right? Like what we're using right now, uh, on and on. But the two main uh, resources that are coming out of the Congo that are of the interest of the United States are cobalt and coltan. And um, the Soviet Union has its own, but the United States has no other method of getting cobalt uh, outside of the heart of Africa. And so, and this is used by the military. It's used by, by the military to produce military technology, um, even weaponry, so on and so forth. Uh, so what the United States essentially does is uh, facilitate the assassination of Patrice Lumumba in order to uh, capture and control this particular resources, resource that is tied to their uh, ability to domi dominate militarily in the world, okay? Patrice Lumumba attempts to uh, play a little politics in the sense that he uh, exploits his options in communication with Russia at the time, the Soviet Union. And essentially the, the United States uh, moves on him through the UN and other entities, but you will hear the person, uh, one of the persons who is uh, working for the CIA there in the United, um, you know, who represents the United States. So I just need to give you some context. And, and at the heart of this is this, we may think that African, um, we may think that African um, unity, which is Pan-Africanism, doesn't mean anything to anyone. But the truth of the matter is, is that it does mean something to them. It means our unity stops their ability to exploit. Let me say it another way. We may think that our unity is inconsequential to other people, but our unity is essential to them exploiting us. So a unified Congo and a unified Africa that does not allow uh, So to the, the interest that the Western world and that the possibly the world at large to some extent, all those entities that get resources from Africa uh, who don't have the same resources in their locale, uh, unity amongst us that would prevent exploitation of the people and the resources is not in their best interest, although it is in our best interest. Okay. So very often we treat African unity as though it's inconsequential, it's not a big deal, but there go uh, many imperialist nations, colonial nations have gone through great lengths to keep calm alive amongst African people.
Yes, I think uh, Dr. Wright uh, is uh, facing some network challenges. Uh, I think she should join us. Yes, uh, Dr. Chen Wright, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. It's All probably right. because I was about to show um, the rest of that little clip, but I haven't been playing it. It's just been on the screen. So, you know, Zoom and uh, YouTube, it's uh, some issue, right? So if you're playing a video from YouTube, it's going to put a time limit on it. But I've been on pause while I've been lecturing. So no problem. I should be able to share again and pick up where I left off, hopefully. <laughs> All right. So um, hold on, let's see if I... And I was about to make a, a, a good point. So <laughs> let's see. So uh, the point is, is though that the United States now had their hand, you know, if you had an image in your mind of Africa and a hand leading into the country, uh, a big white hand. Initially, that hand would have been Belgium grabbing the resources. But now with uh, the so-called liberation of the Congo and then the consequential coup pulled by the United States, infiltrated by the United States in the Congo, the Congo had now gone from Belgian colonialism, where there was one European hand in the country, to international colonialism, where many European nations would have their hands all in the Congo. Okay, it's very important to understand that there were multiple entities uh, benefiting from the resources that were produced by the Congo. And the United States um, would sort of force this situation in the sense that African independence would get bound up with this Eastern, Western, European, um, Eastern being the Soviets and Western being the United States uh, conflict, right? Called the Cold War. Uh, and, and in the end, Patrice Lumumba would be assassinated as a result of trying to bring this very important and strategic uh, nation to its independence for the purpose of serving African people, Congolese people who live right there. Okay, so we're just going to watch a few minutes of it. I shouldn't violate uh, the rules because I think it's got to be like 15 minutes continuous um, video for it to be uh, not correct. So I don't think we're going to tear on that. So that's my lecture on this point. African independence, we may think that uh, nobody cares. Um, we may think no one cares about our unity, but oh, very often because we come from the most wealthy resource wealthy and we are a wonderful human resource yes many people are not interested in um, allowing or simply not interrupting our efforts at unity because it is to their disadvantage our unity and i know the irony we don't care about other people being unified so why are they so invested in our unity well it's because of what i just said because our strategic position in the world uh in terms of resources and on top of that as human resources ourselves um we have become commodities also in the western world and so there's been the commodification of the African person and body. And we know that with slavery, so on and so forth, okay? So um, here we go. It was Lumumba's assassination that sparked a new era for many African revolutionaries. And with it started the epic of Cuba. Oh, hold on, I'm sorry. I think it, okay, no, all right, it's fine. The Congo, 
one of the largest and richest countries on the continent. The Belgian colony was demanding immediate independence. Can everybody hear it? Patrice Lumumba, the young articulate clerk, yes, we can hear. led the movement that okay, negotiated perfect. a peaceful solution to end Belgian rule. On June 30th, 1960, King Baudouin arrived in Leopoldville, the capital named after his great uncle, to hand over power. Le roi Baudouin était dans une voiture découverte. Il saluait la foule, etc. Un Congolais s'est précipité sur la voiture. J'ai vu les, les gardes du roi dégainer. Et Tout le monde avait peur, se disait, il va tuer le roi. Non, il a simplement sorti l'épée du roi de sa gueule. Et il s'est mis à danser avec cette épée. Euh, C'est très symbolique, ça. C'est comme s'il lui a arraché le pouvoir. On Independence Day, all the dignitaries assembled in Parliament. King Baudouin was to announce the transfer of power to the new government. Patrice Lumumba had just been elected prime minister. But the euphoria of independence did not last long. That same day, Lumumba lit a fire that spread through the entire continent. L'indépendance du Congo constitue l'aboutissement de l'œuvre conçue par le génie du roi Léopold II. Le discours du roi Baudouin. So that was my point right there, this idea that, you know, this is the gracious work of King Leopold, okay? Leopold-là. I'm sorry, not King Leopold, King Baudouin. He was not programmed to speak at that moment. He gets up and he goes. He makes a very militant discourse. Today, we are victorious. I ask you to welcome the name of the Congolese government. We have known the irony, the insults, the attacks that we should have suffered on the morning and the morning. Midi et soir, parce que nous étions des nerfs. Rappelez-vous comment on traitait le blanc par rapport au noir. Rappelez-vous dans les écoles quelle place nous occupions. Rappelez-vous tout l'apartheid. Alors évidemment, réaction immédiate de toute la délégation belge. Bon, beaucoup d'agitation pendant que le monde va part. Qui oubliera enfin les fusillades pour périr tant de nos frères, ceux qui ne voulaient plus se soumettre au régime d'injustice d'oppression et d'exploitation. C'était mal reçu par les Belges, mais nous, nous savons tout à fait répondu à nos, à nos aspirations. Et au moment du dîner, on demande à Lubumba de présenter des excuses. Il ne s'en fait pas. Il présente les excuses en disant Je pensais que je devais dire à cet homme des choses, je les ai dites, donc si ça blessé, je m'en excuse et je demande qu'on tourne la page et que nous puissions voir les choses autrement. Mais il était trop tard. La majesté était lésée et la majesté les a décidés le soir même de se venger et tout a commencé. Lumumba wanted to govern independently. But there were only 30 university graduates in the Congo. So it was agreed that for the next five years, Belgium would continue to run the important departments of the new state, including the army. The soldiers felt excluded from the newly acquired freedom. Within days, they started a mutiny, which led to the breakdown of the entire country. The troops were roaming the streets, all armed, and uh, it was it was quite a racial problem. The mutineers were there, and they had uh, matiti, that's you know, bushes on their helmet, which was a sign that they were prepared for action. 
for combat. I can remember one yelling, Verne, Verne, sale flamand. We were all dirty Flemish. It, uh, that was some, some uh, an expression that, that meant you were really bad and uh, we're going to kill you. More and more stories circulated about killing, rape, pillage, etc. It was, if you will, the Iraq of today. Le 10 juillet, le 10 juillet, retenez bien la date, les militaires belges ont occupé l'aéroport de Njili, ici. Ils ont organisé l'agression du Congo en disant, puisque les militaires congolais mutinés se sont attaqués aux femmes, aux enfants et aux officiers, la Belgique n'avait plus aucun autre moyen de protéger ses ressortissants que de faire venir des troupes belges le 10 juillet. Dix jours après. Lumumba immediately turned to the U.S. for support. The United States had never been a colonizing power, and their democratic principles seemed to guarantee support for people fighting for independence. Fidel Castro himself had chosen the U.S. as his first stop for support when his revolution triumphed a year earlier. But like Castro, Lumumba's attitude did not go down well with the Americans. I was in the lobby of the embassy where this little... Let me just say this. This is just their perspective. We're only here for the historical facts and content of this. Uh, we're not exactly uh, interested in the, the slander or the propaganda, right? Like from, so this guy is an American official, former American CIA official. Uh, so we're not here for that portion of it. I'm going to let it play, but uh, just know that we're here to uh, essentially document the historical facts. Okay. Congolese clerk came in and he said he wanted 24 visas. He didn't know what a visa was. The fact was. that Patrice Lumumba right. was assassinated. You have passports to put right? the visas And in, was, uh, no it was an effort on the part of the United so States. So I, I explained to him what a visa was. And I said, why do you need 24? Well, he said, uh, Lumumba is going to the States to see President Eisenhower. I said, oh, that's interesting. Told the ambassador, and he said, I'm not aware of it. So he checked, and Eisenhower said, well, if he comes, I'll, I'll be here. Lumumba couldn't have made a worse impression on the Secretary of State and his deputy and other people with whom he met there. He threatened, he asked for things, uh, including to have a woman sent around to his room. The visit was not a success, and it was clear that Washington would not come to his rescue. Just as Lumumba was leaving Washington, Cuba announced the nationalization of U.S. companies, and a trade embargo was immediately imposed on the island. Lumumba, like Castro, soon discovered that the Soviet Union was more than happy to help where the U.S. would not. At this moment, Lumumba commits probably the second error. He takes the decision and sends a telegram addressed à Khrushchev pour lui demander l'envoi des troupes de l'Union soviétique pour venir chasser les Belges. Ce télégramme, avant même qu'il ne sorte, est volé au secrétaire de Lumumba par son ancien directeur de cabinet qui s'appelait Candolo Damien. Larry Devlin s'accapare du télégramme, les transmet au gouvernement américain. We, we became aware of it almost immediately and it came from uh, Congolese sources. Uh, that immediately alerted the Americans. I became wide-eyed at that. I said, ah, we have a problem here. He tried to play off the West against the East. It's an old game, but it was relatively new at that time in Africa. But Larry Devlin l'a pas pris comme ça. Il a pris pour dire, voilà, la preuve est là, que le monde communiste par conséquent, 
outre le fait qu'il a insulté le roi des Belges, il est communiste, donc il faut le chasser du pouvoir. The Congo crisis was becoming more than just a local conflict in faraway Africa. The superpowers were taking a particular interest, especially Moscow, that had recently set up a bureau for aiding anti-colonial liberation movements. The Soviet Union was eager to help, or at least agreed to help, the legally elected Congolese government It was in the last days of July when a squadron of our Illusion 14 transport planes about 10 left for Leopoldville. By the way, they landed in Athens at the airport, which was partly NATO base. It became a big noise. The whole noise about the Cold War started when we landed then. It was the first time that there'd ever been Soviets in that part of Africa, at least, certainly not in the Congo, and very few in the rest of Africa, because the colonial powers were not desirous of having the Soviets there. Полем для охоты. Почему? В Европе границы были забетонированы. Перейти границу означало начать атомную войну, которую никто не хотел. А третий мир, он был как будто без хозяина. Там была возможна свободная охота. Там можно было приобретать влияние. We believed, and I think it's true, that it was attempt to hold Congo as a base, especially as a base of minerals for the United States, for the West. We should not forget that the first uh, atomic bomb was done of those uranium found in the Congo. There are only two countries in the world that supplied cobalt at that time, Soviet Union and the Congo. And cobalt is extremely important for jet engines and all sorts of high technology. And we could not get it from the Soviet Union because it was a security commodity. So Congo was our only source. I suspect that the people in Washington began wondering where are we going to get our cobalt from if, if uh, the Soviets managed to control that. The United States deplores the unilateral action of the Soviet Union in supplying aircraft and other equipment for military purposes to the Congo. The Soviet action which seems to be motivated entirely by the Soviet Union's political designs in Africa. I must repeat that the United States takes a most serious view of this action by the Soviet Union. Eisenhower fumed about aggressive Soviet support for his opponents. Soviet military aid for Lumumba arrived in the Congo only one month after the first Soviet arms shipment had landed in Cuba. To make matters worse, Castro openly declared that he intended to use these weapons to export his revolution. Eisenhower decided to send the CIA into action. I received a message saying that uh, people were in Washington were highly concerned about the activities of the prime minister and that uh, they hoped that he would go, you know, to a it would be a change in the government. The next thing I knew, I received a cable saying that someone by the name of Joe would arrive in Leopoldville, and I was to take my instructions from him. And the instructions were that I was to remove him physically from, <laughs> in other words, assassinate uh, the moment. I asked first, whose instructions are these? And he said, they've come from President Eisenhower. The president wanted this done, and I, and I was... Essentially, the United States admitting to the fact uh, that they, you know, the president of the United States facilitated and initiated the assassination of Patrice Lumumba. I'm not going to let it uh, play out there. It'll go on, and of course, Patrice Lumumba is um, kidnapped. Uh, there is a coup pulled by 
the head of the military, which is Mobutu Sese Seku. Some of you may know the story. Uh, that being the case, um, you should watch the rest of it if you haven't already. Very important film in understanding the uh, important strategic importance of Africa and African unity as it relates to the rest of the Western world. Um, and the film goes on to show the kidnapping of Patrice Lumumba. Uh, it does not show the subsequent assassination. As we know, it's, there were still developments even up until the last several years because they never um, surrendered the body in any significant way uh, and did as much as they could to sort of cover his tracks and make Patrice Lumumba disappear. But for those of you who are, um, have wondered you know, what the position should be of African people as it relates to Ukraine and Russia and things of that nature. Our position should always be that our unity, unity of African people is primary, is most important, and that European conflicts and issues um, are sort of peripheral, not sort of, but are peripheral to us um, because Africa has been exploited in the context of European con uh, conflict, right? East and West fighting uh, an African uh, nation and people being the sort of sacrificial lambs in those conflicts. Uh, so the answer to whose side one should take in the current situation in Russia and Ukraine, take no position on it because both are uh, not interested in our total liberation and independence um, from colonialism, from oppression, from exploitation, in spite of the fact that Russia is aligned here with Patrice Lumumba. But ultimately, uh, this African leader and this African nation gets trampled in the context of European conflict, right? When they are uh, fighting over a particular resource. In this case, it is cobalt. Uh, they don't talk about coltan here, but coltan is also one of the major resources that are that's um, uh, coveted from the Congo. Okay, uh, and so please do go on and uh, watch the rest. It tells you what exactly happens and how um, what the developments are as far as that's concerned. But this is just our sort of commentary and course of study on when Pan-Africanism has attempted to express itself on the continent has been a huge threat to European um, development, European uh, imperialism and colonialism, okay? Uh, so I think that's it for now, please do, uh, the next couple of minutes, you know, exhibit, you know, what essentially happened in the Congo with um, uh, with the Mobutu Sese Seku, and uh, and then leads into a discussion of then leads into a discussion of um, Cuba's role in other efforts on the continent of Africa. Lastly, I want to say, and closing just briefly, that you will see uh, Emil Cabral in Guinea Bissau and the relationship of Cuba. Now, Cuba, we don't want to fixate on them, but they have always been on the support in support of African liberation and would have a role in liberation struggles in Africa, particularly Angola, the Congo. Uh, uh, Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde. Uh, and uh, there is a particular uh, line in terms of Cuba. They are interested in advancing internationalism, meaning spreading the revolution against imperialism and colonialism. And so that is what you see being expressed. But the, the point for us is that one of Pan-African's greatest expressions has been on the continent of Africa with the attempt by various African nations that will become independent to express continental unity. And what is unity? Another word for unity. Unity, another word for African unity is Pan-Africanism.
Okay, so I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to look at your comments really briefly. Please, I'll repost that film along with a couple of documents by um, a male called Cabral in Nkrumah. And, um, and then I'll leave it there. Okay, so I don't have any comments because very, okay, can you share this video with me? Oh, um, I can't see the name. I, hopefully the person who just made the comment, Arok Da'amu, um, hopefully you can see the, Zoom, the WhatsApp group. I will repost the film along with the documents, okay? And you should be able to see it there, okay? And watch it. And if not, you can always go to YouTube and type in Cuba and African Odyssey. Cuba and African Odyssey. And the full film is there. It is an extraordinary film. I use it in the classroom. And um, when I teach um, modern Black and African political thought, it's an extraordinary film. Okay, so you can also access it in, in, in YouTube yourself, but I will definitely repost it in the group with the subsequent articles, okay? Um, thank you very much. Sorry, I can't be on camera at this time, but I definitely want you to take note of this lecture um, because this is a very important conversation right now with regard to Where's the, the, the position of African unity in a world where European powers are conflicting and are still in war? And let me just be very clear. They have always been warring with each other. So don't, uh, don't ever think that like, oh, this Ukraine, Russia thing. No, it's geopolitical. Uh, the rest of the world shouldn't be involved in it. And certainly African people should never suffer as a result. And if you know, this organization, I Love Black People, went over to support African people who were in Ukraine. And they were essentially uh, doing, this organization doing what it does, attempting to protect African people, Black people, who were uh, mistreated in the context of the conflict uh, between Russia and Ukraine. Ukrainian people, in spite of what they are going through, still had uh, uh, hate, essentially, and disdain in their hearts for African people and uh, denied African people the ability to move out of the country in the face of war. Uh, and so we don't need to be on any of their sides, okay? True, Russia's never enslaved. Russia has been uh, supportive in some instances to African countries has not colonized uh, in Africa, but there is also some political dynamics there that are nuanced, that are not so obvious about Russia, that would make me say, um, you know, we need to be about African unity and less concerned about what European powers are up to, because two enemies in that context will come together and marginalize us. Right? So they could be enemy, enemies, but the one thing they agree on is exploiting us, African people and Black people. Okay, can I make a suggestion that we can start producing a court magazine for the continent? Yeah, please speak to the administrators. Um, I'm reading the messages and they're quite well explained. More will grasp the concept of Pan-Africanism and the urgent need to create a seat in the African Union and regional blocks for Blacks in those instructions. Yeah, so I was part of a conference called the First Conference of Intellectuals for Africa and the Diaspora. The diaspora is actually recognized in the AU now, um, not voting, but uh, surely have membership um, or our observer nations. Um, however, um, you know, there is a lot about the African Union, and I'll get back to the conversation about organizational expressions of Pan-Africanism, but there's a lot that the African Union could be doing and is not doing. And that's not to say there hasn't been progress over the last uh, 17, let me see, 2004, over the last... Um, 18 years since the conference I spoke of, 
However, um, the reality is, is that, uh, you know, there's still not enough independence of the African Union, which used to be the OAU. So it's sort of fallen away from its ultimate a goal and objective, which was to bring about the unity of Africa. But just so you all know something very important, today's African Union, 60% of the funding comes from the European Union. And so how can you have a, 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 an agenda that's independent and to the benefit of African people if uh, the overwhelming amount of your funding comes from the European Union, which has a obvious and direct interest in seeing or not seeing the African Union bring about what its real mission was, which is African unity, continental unity, uh, so that uh, African people can benefit the most from the resources on the African continent and uh, European nations should be benefiting the least from resources uh, coming from the continent. It's the complete opposite. So that things like that have to be challenged and rectified, okay? Um, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, Thank you, thank you, you're welcome. Yeah, uh-oh, somebody wasn't getting audio, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you all, and um, I had no problem, uh, Sanko, uh, I, I, I got it, huh? Um, Okay, so the um, the film is called Cuba, an African Odyssey. I'm going to repost it in the group. Uh, but you can go on YouTube yourself. It's called Cuba, an African Odyssey, O-D-Y-S-S-E-Y, -S Odyssey. Uh, you, it'll come right up. Both parts are there. And, uh, but I will repost it in the group. It was uh, posted the week before. Um, and so this is my first really concrete lecture on this period in history, um, which is important. And now we're going to get into the dialogue around African unity on the continent by some African um, liberation leaders or leaders of liberation struggles in Africa, such as Amilcar Cabral, Kwame Nkrumah, we know of Ghana first African nation to wrestle their independence away from uh, the British on the continent. Uh, but then the years to follow, 1962, 1963, seven African nations, 17 African nations would take their independence, okay, in two years. So independent struggles were booming in Africa. You know how people talk about the Arab Spring? No, the African spring was much more powerful. Um, so th that being said, um, I'm going to end there because I keep attempting to end. <laughs> and um, I will post it again in the group. Oh, well, all of, thank you, Senko, uh, for the suggestions. I, I wish I have someone who can translate in English, but, uh, and, but I don't know, we, that was, that's something organizationally that has to be discussed. But point is, is that, um, you know, thank you for the suggestion. The administrators take note of the suggestion <laughs> around meeting twice a week, one session in English, one is in French. Uh, but this film, as you can see, has subtitles uh, when they were speaking uh, French or Portuguese or uh, any other language, okay? Thank you all so much. I'm sorry I'm slightly over the time. You're appreciated. Um, and all the necessary materials will be reposted uh, for your reading, for, for your viewing, and then for your reading, okay? Um, I wanted to just say be safe, and I am because we are, okay? Peace.
Yes, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Wright. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I am because we are. <laughs>